Hey guys, so why are you David Frank here from TechSocial.com with my installation video of the Intensity Pro from Blackmagic Design. This retails currently as of this recording for 189 US dollars, which I admit is not the cheapest. Anyway, the point of this video is to just show you the step-by-step -step process of installing the Intensity Pro in my Mac Pro 2006 model. First, a little bit of backstory. Um, I have the original Xbox 360 now hooked up to my Asus monitor. But the new Xbox 360 is hooked up to my TV, right, which is right there, that big old black thing. Uh, so my old Xbox 360, as you guessed it, yes, outputs via component video, which isn't that bad. Um, I admit it's not, it's not bad compared to HDMI. I personally think people hype up HDMI a little too much. Yes, it combines video and audio source, which is great, and it's the best signal that you can get right now in terms of consumer. Um, electronics, which is awesome, and I have HDMI, so I obviously fully support it, but in my opinion, Component still looks great. Personally, I think people make Component sound like it's the crappiest video signal that you could possibly get when it's far from that. Anyway, let's get on to the installation, and yes, I realize this is going to be a very easy installation process, but it's an excuse to do another upgraded video, because I know you guys love my Mac Pro upgrades. And I obviously love them myself because it means I get to install new hardware. And oh, by the way, for those not aware, this is a PCI Express card. So it should be pretty fun adding another PCI Express card. So let's do this. So first of all, while my Mac Pro is shutting down, let's go through everything we have here. This is obviously the box that came in. Wawa Coffee with my LED coaster. Thank you, Coolvio, again. Uh, very nice of you to sponsor that via davidswishus.com. And yes, the LEDs change color. Um, if you can see that, yeah, that, uh, it's green right now. So anyway, here is the card itself. I'm just going to go through the contents of the box real quick to give you guys some context. Here is the Intensity Pro, again, PCI Express. Very cool. Got two HDMI ports as well as your breakout port for a component. So I will only be using the breakout port as well as um, the HDMI output to go to my ASUS monitor. Since this does have full HDMI support, DVI support and VGA support, which is pretty awesome if you ask me. And here's an S-Video cable of some kind. I don't really know why I would use this. I thought S-Video died years ago. It's really kind of weird that they even included that, to be honest. I could be wrong. I mean, it looks like S-Video. Look at that. Point is, I mean, why would you need it? That's just my opinion. And here is the breakout, the, yeah, yeah, the breakout, the breakout cable, the part I will be using for now until I put a newer Xbox 360 over here. This will do just fine. So there you go. It kind of looks like an old serial port or um, kind of like DVI, the shape of it. Actually, it's very similar in terms of the shape of DVI. And of course, here's all the component cables. It's insane, as well as RCA audio stereo. So let's put that over there. And the manual with included software right there, a nice black disc, very sharp. And of course, the welcome to Black Magic Design, basically thanking me for buying their product. And you are very welcome. And that is my floor creaking. Oh, by the way, I wanna make a quick note. This is a very close shot. Hopefully, I'm not scaring you. Um, I, I forget the person's name on Facebook, but they, they told me about a software called Line In. L-I-N-E-I-N, -E you know, the two words line in, but together. For the Mac, it's free. It's a great little piece of software that enables me to take an audio source and reroute it to the system's audio output. So basically, I'm using my optical in audio port on my Mac Pro, finally. I've always wondered when the hell I'm going to use those ports because, as you know, the Mac Pro does have full optical audio support which is pretty awesome. Now keep in mind, this was before the days of HDMI. So back then, optical was kind of like the thing to have. But it's really, really cool that I can finally use that. So basically, my Xbox 360 audio is going via optical into my Mac Pro using the line-in software to reroute it, convert it, whatever you want to call it, to my system output. So that way I can hear my Xbox 360 gameplay through, through my Logitech speakers as well as my Mac Pro sound. So I can watch YouTube videos at the same time as well as play games and hear it all simultaneously. Maybe I'm just easily amused, but I just think that's the coolest thing. Anyway, let's get into opening up the Mac Pro. All right, the Mac Pro is on the desk, heavy as usual. Pulling the back latch, door comes off. 
could not be easier. I love it. It's actually been a while since I've been inside here, so it's always fun to go back in and do some upgrades. So let's take the Intensity Pro card again right here. Very small card, but very powerful at that. And let's pop it in. All right, first let's put the card aside and take off the bracket. We do have three slots open still, which is pretty awesome. So I have plenty of room for expansion yet. Take that small bracket off. And we have slot four, three, and two available. Actually, two is taken, I'm sorry. Two is actually a USB card, which doesn't work that great to be honest. I'm not sure, I, I, I don't know. It's just really not that reliable, but I'm really not using it uh, because I've been going more minimal with my setup. So let's just put this in slot four for now. The very top one. Uh, actually, it would help if I took the bracket off. Uh, and... Yep, pops right out. Putting the card in. I don't want to touch anything uh, important here. Okay, there you go. Just some bad lighting since I have a light on my face right here. So the card is in. It is snug. So now, let's put this back on. So this way? Yeah. All right, that is in. Let's put the door back on. And then we can boot it up and see what happens. Hopefully we won't run into any problems. I don't see why we would. Actually, before we boot everything, it obviously would be a good idea to put the breakout cable and everything on there first then connect the Xbox to it. Now, I'm not going to show you guys this process. You literally just plug it in and then the rest will take care of itself. Okay. VGA cable is disconnected. In case you guys are wondering, the VGA cable is great. Uh, this is something I used a lot in college for my old Dell display. And there you go. It's a usual AV connector for the 360 as well as a VGA video connector and your typical RCA stereo plugs. This is a great great little adapter. Um, you can probably find this thing on Amazon for like 20 bucks. It's really not that bad. It's a great little cable. So now let's get my regular uh, component video cables, which just happen to be right here. There's the AV side, well in terms of the 360's uh, interface, and components as well as stereo audio. But again, I will not be using stereo, well, I'll technically will be using stereo audio, uh, but I'll be using the optical in again, which is so awesome. I'll, oh, by the way, I'll put a link below for line in. It's free. Mac users use it. Trust me. You'll love it. Chances are pretty good that you already know of it. I'm just a little late to the game. So. Logging that in. Now let's route these over here, guys. Have I ever told you how much I hate cables? Seriously, I really do. They're a pain in the ass. An HDMI cable to go from HDMI out to my ASUS display, and that should convert the video automatically. It should, in theory. So, I don't even think this is long enough, and if it's not, that's okay. I'll have to find a new and longer one. This is actually for my new 360. I just ripped it out, you know, just, just for today, just to test it. And then I'll buy myself a new one. Actually, I have one on my Mac Mini. I think. So, that might work. I know, it's a nice shot of my butt. Since that cable's not long enough, I'm temporarily moving my ASUS display. Simply for the reason of seeing if it works. And hopefully it does. Yeah, this cable really is short. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm definitely going to need to buy a better one. Unless we have one laying around the house. I swear, I, I have to say it again, guys. I hate cables. I really do. Alright, that's plugged in. Now let's turn on the Mac Pro and see what happens with this horrible looking setup. Alright, let's hide everything. It's going to reopen all my applications. Which usually takes about a minute. So, I'm trying to see here. Let's open up Final Cut Pro 10 and turn on my 360. There you go. 
Okay, here we go. Never mind. I'm now on their support page. Mac OS 10, Intensity, Intensity Pro, Search, and Desktop Video 9.1 for Macintosh. They also have a 9.2 beta. Hello. But I'm not going to do the beta right now. Oh, I had to register and everything. Jeez. Information is entered. I just registered it via the serial on the sticker. You don't have to register, but I like to register and just... Maybe I'm just weird like that. Fonica Pro 10 isn't usually over here, by the way. Everything is just thrown off because I accidentally dragged it. By the way, I cannot live without dual monitors. Can anybody back me up on that? I cannot live without them. I just cannot imagine using one display. I would go crazy. Especially when it comes to graphic design work and social media. As you can see, I always have Twitter on my left monitor. So... That is downloading. Let me show that in the finder. Oh, I just canceled it. I'm such a freaking moron. And here we go. Restart. Hopefully nothing prompts me. In terms of restarting. Nope, everything looks good. Well, I was running like 15 apps in background, so that's why it takes a little while. That is my graphics card here in the background. It always revs up in the beginning. I'm not really sure why. It doesn't show any weird signs of performance. It's just, that's what it does. Then if you listen, it'll go quiet. So there it goes. It's practically silent. I love it. Speaking of that, that's the ATI Radeon HD 5770. So if you search my channel, you can find that. Well, through a slight camera shift there. And much frustration, I have decided, well, I found out you cannot convert component to HDMI. I was under the impression this card could do that. Gotta be honest, I'm really disappointed. I guess I'll still upload this video. But what I'm going to do with this card, I'm really not sure yet. I might return it to Amazon. Or I might keep it and just hope I win another 360 via um, Quibit. Actually, I th I'm thinking of just... I know, Shane. I know. Shane, I was just saying that. I was... I was just saying that. I might get an actual external hardware component again. Um, that way I don't have to rely on this card. It really sucks because the Hall Pog did a perfect job. Well, for the most part, for what it was. Hardware upgrades have their failures, but I'm still going to upload this just as a lesson to anybody else wondering. I guess you really can't convert component to HDMI. I don't see why you can't. I know it's 1080i versus 1080p and it's got to upscale, but that's the point. A card like this in 2012, why can't it upscale the signal? All right, no big deal. Fail on my part. Thanks for watching, guys. And if I have an update regarding this, then I'll make another video explaining just that. Peace. Wait, don't end the video just yet. I have some excellent news for you guys. You're probably going to hate me for saying this, but you know what? Let me not tell you yet. Um, let's just say something awesome is coming on Friday. Hopefully by Friday. That way I have it for the weekend. The card does show up as an input source, which in my eyes is a very good sign. So we can only wait until Friday or hopefully somewhere around there to see if it fully works with what I have in mind. So thank you guys so much for watching. I apologize for my failness in this video, but I really don't mind showing you my mistakes because as I just mentioned, it's a great learning experience and hopefully you guys can avoid the same mistake I made. And I gotta admit, I, sh I should have realized that you cannot convert a component to HDMI, which I still find that unbelievable for some reason. It's 2012, I don't see why you can't do that. But you know what? That's alright. Everybody makes errors and I have nothing to hide. So thank you guys for watching again. I will hopefully have an update for you guys in a few days and I will see you very soon. I'm very excited to show you. You're probably going to hate me. All right, that's enough.